Hey everybody, super cool, and I am going to review today Conspiracy Theory. Conspiracy Theory is a film that I watched when I was a kid, and uh, I really, I, I actually enjoyed it when I was younger. Um, it stars uh, Mel Gibson and uh, Julia Roberts and uh, the great uh, Professor Xavier, and so... In the movie, it's it starts off with him. He plays the everyman conspiracy conspiracy theorists. Like it's just they tried to make this character into a a mixture of all conspiracy theorists, like combined into one. Like th th I'm gonna get to that eventually. Like basically, that's the eventual crux of this film is the it, it's just too much conspiracy like it's um to condense it i would say it's uh like death by chocolate where it's just, just too much just too much chocolate um the starting off with basically it starts off in the first few minutes you get to know who this character is you get to see him uh, working at his job, he's a, a taxi driver, which I think might just be a call to, to taxi driver. Um, this, this, as it's supposed to be like this lone character in, in this lower tier job, I guess. Um, if you, I, no offense to taxi drivers, I know a lot of them, they're cool. In fact, I wouldn't be here, uh, without a taxi driver. Anyway, um... So, in the film, he plays this guy who's just up on the latest conspiracies, and he's, he's, he writes a newsletter. Um, the film itself, starting off, I'm going to start here. The, the film itself, is, I've noticed, is written like a conspiracy in that it takes you through a lot of twists and turns. Like, if you've never seen it before, you don't know how it's going to turn up next. Like, each scene, it, it just reveals more of the story than what it did before in ways that you might not expect, uh, both good and bad. The, um, there's just instances in this film where I think his, his character choices in the film don't make sense if they're in the real world. Like, um, just the natural... His motivation is not clear enough, I think, um, where it starts off as him just being a conspiracy theorist, and you don't know much about him more than that. There's a couple scenes where he gets a little more depth that you see he's kind of got like a loving side. He talks to a, one of his customers in the cab about being in love. Uh, in the same scene, you also see him black out, and then when he comes back from the blackout, he's actually driving with with the guy in the back, uh, and then onto oncoming traffic, and he has no idea. He just woke up from the blackout, um, and the guy in the back has just been freaking out this whole time, right? So you get that all in like the first five minutes, like it, like literally very quickly this movie is very condensed it's um it, it is there's a lot to compact and because of that i think there was a lot of people missed and then misinterpreted um because of it and so therefore it didn't do great in the box office uh, i looked it up on imdb it took about 70 million for a budget and then it grossed 75 million so it did not do well um the you see him after you after the first few scenes he's uh you see him where he lives and what type of uh, place it is it's just super paranoid um he you see how he's got the newsletter that he writes um he's got a friend called flip um and then flip is like an old army vet from the not from nam uh, there's a lot to compact in the first like half hour like it sets uh i don't want to go into detail because it would literally take me 
half hour. I've, I've done previous videos I've removed and, and re-edit or just redo again because uh, A, I don't have editing. B, there's just so much stuff in the film because it keeps you on your toes throughout the film as a suspense. The, um, you are, uh, you see this guy in, this, in these different shades of light, right? Uh, one instance, yeah, you see him as this conspiracy guy, so he's kind of paranoid and kind of a creep. Another uh, scene, you see him, he's got kind of a heart to him where he's talking about the love, and he talks about how you would just be free to, like, jump off the Empire State Building yelling Geronimo. That in itself then plays off later in the film. Um, you've got scenes with him and uh, Julia Roberts, um, you, you don't know how they meet eventually, but eventually you kind of do, um, you, there's a lot of parallels in the interactions of those instances as well, like you get to meet her a first time, and then you get to meet her a second time, and then they both kind of, they, they mirror each other, but with worse circumstances, um, I will say this about Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart's character in this film is, I think, underrated because you don't see Patrick Stewart in a villainous role enough in his career that I've seen. Like you, most people know him from like Picard and Star Trek, or um, uh, maybe Professor X in X Men. Um, I see him in a few other roles, but I don't remember a lot that many that he's played like a villain uh and he does play a villain well in this i think i think it's really great um you see how basically i wonder i, I was going to go into how the movie started basically and just kind of leave it midway through uh so because i didn't want to give away this the, the ending but that took like literally a half hour um and i just don't want to say this on my phone um, so I will say that, um, by the time you get to this place with her, um, and you find out why, there's a moment in the scene where it shows who this guy is. Um, you find out, uh, that as the story progresses, it gets more in depth and you go deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole and then you find out by the end of the film how each of the small pieces that at the beginning of the film all just kind of all added up i would say the right it's it's decent writing but it's just too focused on the the like the the, the theme of of conspiracy theories like the story itself is written as a conspiracy theory like taking down that rabbit hole the uh, uh, there's a conspiracy theory of Julia Roberts about what happened with her dad in the movie. Uh, she's trying to find that out. Um, Patrick Stewart's part of the conspiracy theory is being one of the agents of the government. Um, there's other players involved with other agencies of the government that you're not quite clear about. Um, there's, uh, it's definitely a suspense thriller. That's what they were trying to go for. Um, the, the, the things I do not like about the film are the way they re they wrote the actor, or not so the, the, his motivations are not clear. There are instances where it starts off, <clears throat> uh, Basically, to give a point in the movie for frame of reference, because of what I'm talking about, he gets a whiff of a conspiracy. He goes on the trail of that conspiracy, following a couple agents that work for the government. Late, just a few moments later in the film, he then gets kidnapped by those agents, a different set of agents, essentially, um, to find out information about what he knows about his conspiracy theories. Um, that's when you get introduced with Patrick Stewart in the film. Uh, they don't necessarily, they don't know, don't, don't know each other, uh, in that encounter. And, um, 
you, you, you learn a lot. Like, it's just, it's interesting because what, what I brought, what I want to bring up was, I'm just going to keep my train of thought, was that uh, in that instance, you're wanting to, like, as someone who's kidnapped, you're wanting to get out of being kidnapped, right? You're wanting to find a way out. Um, he's, he can do that in the film, um, but it's his choices that happen after that like, it's supposed to be, like, he's kind of on the run from the government agents that kidnapped him. Um, but the actions that he takes don't, aren't the best choices to make to do so, to get to that, to get away. Um, it's just the way he goes about, his actions, the way he goes about doing that doesn't match the motivations that was given to him. Um, I would say that I think, yeah. Basically, when you're just punch, I'll say this: when you're when you're yeah, when you're punching cops and like, uh, 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 and, and and not just cops, but like you're punch, you're 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 fighting um, uh, doctors and nurses and shit, and like it's just basically GTA four for you. Um, I think that's a problem in the story. Um, that wasn't necessarily addressed it, because it's kind of. It's, because it's just an action movie. It's Mel Gibson. He needs shit to do. Uh, there's one scene in the movie that didn't make any sense because um, where he's away, he's able to get away from the agents in the film, and to do so, he hides out in a car. Um, it turns out in the film, just so happens to be uh, uh, Julia Roberts's car at the same time. And he, they both discuss it, and he does not know that it's actually her, that it's her car. So therefore, he was just chilling in some random car, waiting for someone to get in the car to then, like, take them hostage and get away. Like, what was he expecting? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, that doesn't, that didn't make sense to me. Like, now... It would make more sense if, like, early in the film, they showed a scene where she was in her car and, and he was watching her, and then he could say, oh, that's her car, that makes sense, I'm just gonna wait for her there, but no, they don't have that, it's just, they publicly admit, like, in the, in the dialogue, I don't, I didn't realize this was your car, <laughs> like, I guess it's supposed to be, like, a funny moment that they're trying to play it off as, but rewatching it, it does not look that way from my point of view when I watched it um you do get resolved of what happens in the story and you you find out that they are connected um I think the the, the love story between the two is uh the relationship between the two I should say is um pretty one-sided for most of the movie from uh Jerry's character to her character Alice I think it was um, and so until towards the end of the film, but it's a good turn. You realize, but even then, it, without giving it away, there's a point where he's explaining the end of the film and it's kind of like he could have made it up. <laughs> like there's no proof of, in the film. There's no proof about the ending of the story. And so you just kind of have to take his word for it. Um, and then she kind of, and just over the course of the movie, she falls for him, mostly pity. She basically feels pity for him until the point where she just falls in love with him. Um, I feel like I'm writing on this movie more than I should be because it's really enjoyable. Um, it, even re with those flaws, it's still, there's still moments in the film that are still funny because it's still Mel Gibson as being charming Mel Gibson. Um, there's just subtle dialogue that he has with random characters in the film or uh, his interaction with Julia Roberts and things like that. Uh, his reactions in the film are hilarious and like what he does to get away from the cops is funny. Um, overall, I would say if I had to grade the film, I would give it like a C plus. Uh, I can see what it's trying to go for, but I can go back to the analogy of too much chocolate. It's, uh, it's just, it's just too much conspiracy, uh, and, uh, it, you can see it, 
in the, 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 the Book of Catcher in the Rye was a reference. Uh, there's a scene where that really stands out in how they develop that line and how they bring it into the movie. kind of stood out for me. Um, but I, it's, I would say it's worth at least one watch. Uh, and that will determine if you like it or hate it or just meh. Um, but I enjoyed it growing up. I liked it. I thought his performance was funny when I was a kid and his reactions and, um, and the dynamic between the two. And like, you could actually see when I was a kid, like in life, you get to feel what it's kind of like to be an outside person that's not that way, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't necessarily fit in all the time. So you can kind of feel that way. There was a resonance there. Um, so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And so when they, in that scene about when they're talking about, um, you know, about buying multiple copies of Catcher in the Rye, you know, why he does that just to feel normal. It, it, it's, it's a crucial point in the film to make him the most human. Uh, like, if you went to the bathroom at that point, I think you would just look at him as just another crazy person. Uh, it's just an emotional crutch in the film, and I think they should have had more of those. Um, just honest moments, but they kind of didn't. Uh, if you want to check it out, I think you should. I think it's just like worth a watch, or at least once. Um, but yeah, that's my review. If you uh, like, subscribe, do the routine, you like it. And uh, I'll check it later.